Hi there. In this session, uh, which may be rather long, I'm going to try to walk through a number of deals very slowly as to how you would think while bidding and how you would bid. The bidding system we taught you in lesson three is a very simple bidding system. So if you go out later and then bidding better or you become a more experienced player, you might find this rather simplistic. But this is the method that I will show you to try to reduce your confusion as a beginner player in bridge. I'm going to start like this. On the left-hand side, you see what I call the Grand Unified Theory of Contract Determination, how you determine what contract you can play in given a particular set of points. And if you remember, I said that what you can remember is the 25 point level. At the 25 point level, you have a three no trump game or a four level major game. Everything else can be translated into multiples of four points per trick level from there. And hopefully this will get you started and be relatively easy to remember. The second thing to note is hand classification. You have a classification as minimum invitational game likely hand, as opener and as responder. And these are the point ranges. So sometimes it helps to think about what kind of hand you have when evaluating whether to go on or not, or to bid something or not to bid a limit bid or a forcing bid and i'll try to uh, come to this when we go through the deals so let's get on with it here in this deal i'm the dealer or rather east is the dealer and i'm next other dealer because dealer has passed I have seven high cut points and therefore I would pass. My partner, conveniently named Adantu, right, is going to bid one spade. One spade means my partner is starting starting at a minimum hand but it is not a limit bit it just starts at a minimum hand it could be higher my partner could be higher i don't know that yet but what i do know is that he has at least five spades at least five spades i have three spades therefore we have a fit at least eight spades a trump fit. So with a trump fit, I can now start counting distribution points. I have one distribution point. So I can say that I have eight total points. With eight total points, I still can't change my hand category. My hand category as responder is still in the minimum hand range. If you recall, we prefer to bid a major trump suit. So if we see a major trump suit, we should certainly try to bid that. Should I bid two spades or three spades? With a minimum hand, I should just bid two spades. This will tell partner that I have support for him and a minimum hand, six to nine points. You can then calculate accordingly whether it is worthwhile to go on. With at least a good invitational hand or a game like a hand, he can definitely go on. With a good invitational hand, he might, for example, bid three spades to invite me to complete 
the bidding to four spades. With a game likely hand, 19 plus points, he would be more than justified to go straight to game himself, four spades. As I said, with an invitational hand, he has 16 to 18 points. And there might be a game if I had the potentially the higher side of my minimum hand, and so did he. So he could invite with a three spade. In this case, he doesn't, he passes. I'm going to ignore the three diamond at the moment because uh, in this video, we do not want to teach uh, competitive bidding. So I'm just going to pass on that for the moment. Okay. And you can see he has 14 high cut points and one distribution point, 15. 15 total points. He is actually at the high end of a minimum hand. With a minimum hand, opposite a minimum hand, you can only ever be in part score. Next. I have 15 high cut points and a balanced hand. So I should bid one no trump. What does my partner bid? He passes. This is a very simple one. Partner has only six high cut points. With six high cut points, even if I had a maximum of my 17 high cut points, there is no prospect for game. So therefore, given that there's no prospect of game, he should just pass and we play at the cheapest contract. Partner bids one diamond. One diamond indicates he has no five card major. And I look at my hand, I have three of each major. Therefore, there is no prospect of a major fit at all. We are looking at either a minor contract or a no trump contract. What kind of hand do I have? I have 11 high card points. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 high cut points. Now, should I play in diamonds? Well, I don't have any distribution, distribution points. So with 11 points, opposite a minimum of 13 points, minimum of 13 points from my partner, I have 24 points. So therefore, I can go up to three diamonds quite safely. But should I go to three diamonds? Possibly. But yet, we always try to prefer no trump contracts. Unfortunately, I have two weak suits with partial stoppers in clubs and perhaps not so good in hearts. And I cannot bid one heart or one spade because I don't even have four card major. So bidding three diamond is possible to signal the partner a very specific point range. Or you can bid two no trump. If you assume partner has 11 points and you have 11 points, you have 22 points. That's enough to play at two no trump. Then if you bid two no trump, partner would go to three no trump with a little bit extra, with a little bit more than minimum, probably near the top of his uh, minimum range, around 14 to 15 points. This is where you might have to take a little bit of chance because you couldn't beat any other suit. So in this case, I'm going to choose two no trump.
All right. So, what does partner do then? Partner bids Trino Trump. And let's see what, what's the result. So, as you can see, in actual fact, uh, most of the suits are covered except for the club suit, which is quite weak. So sometimes you do have to take these chances when you're going for a no Trump contract without certainty of stoppers. All right. I could have bid three diamond. That would probably have been safer. This one is riskier, but then this one has a potential game bonus while the three diamond doesn't. Risk and reward. They both go together. Okay, partner passes. Comes down to me. I have 16 points and a void in clubs. I have no clubs at all. This is actually very promising if I had a fit. You have to actually think these things up even before you bid. Here, I have 16 high cut points. But if I found a fit, I could have as many as 19 points which is a game likely hand. So the moment we find a fit, game is likely. But we'll see. I'm going to bid one heart to show that I have five hearts. Partner bids one no trump. A one no trump response is a kind of default bid indicating a minimum hand. It does not necessarily indicate stoppers, but it does indicate a minimum hand for sure. With 16 high cut points, which is an invitational hand opposite a minimum hand, you have a part score or a game if partner was on the high side of a minimum hand. So what can you do? Well, you'll be justified in bidding two diamond. With a two diamond, you're showing partner that you have an invitational hand and four diamonds. An invitational hand starts at 16 high cut points. What does partner do now? Partner bids two hearts. So partner has twice already indicated a minimum hand. First by bidding one more trump. Second by bidding a limit bid. You can see this, right? He bids the same suit even though you bid two diamond. So you can think of it as partner is basically trying to put the bricks on your bidding. Partner is trying to put the bricks on your bidding. So now you have an invitational hand, partner has a minimum hand. You might have had game if partner was a bit stronger, but looks like partner has twice tried to slow you down. You should probably pass. And there you have it. You don't really have a game here. Turns out partner had a really long club suit, which might have been useful if you had some clubs, but no, you don't. So this is probably about the right contract. All right. I have 14 high cut points. And you can regard this as relatively balanced, but it's not 15. So don't bid one no trump. You bid one club. Because you don't have a major suit to bid. You don't have a diamond suit to bid. So you're relegated to choosing one of the most common opening bids in bridge, one club. 
because it's the default bit. So, what does partner bit? Partner bit is one heart. So, one heart indicates four or more hearts and a minimum, and it starts at the minimum hand but has no actual upper range because this is a forcing bit. It's a new suit, right? It's a forcing bit. Okay. So you don't know whether partner is a minimum hand, an invitational hand, or a game likely hand. All you can do is try to carry on and try to further describe your hand. What kind of hand do you have? You have basically a minimum hand and no fit. So the only thing you can do is bid one no trump. One no trump, as I explained before, is a kind of a, a default bid to use when you want to try to show your partner that you have a minimum hand. So partner also knows that you don't have a four card spade because if you had a four card spade, you'll be bidding one spade instead. So there's no need to tell partner that you don't have uh, four cards in spades or better. Your partner knows. So what's your partner going to do? He bids two no trump. By bidding to no trump, he is issuing you an invitation. He's saying he knows you have a minimum hand. Okay. Starting at about 11 high cut points with shape or 13 high cut points balance. One of these two. A minimum hand. He knows that. So by, and he could have passed you, which means he is higher than a minimum hand. He is probably an invitational hand because right now he is trying to figure out whether you have a game or not. You are probably in this box here, part score or game. So basically he is asking you to go to three no trump if you had more, a little bit more on the upper side of a minimum hand. So which means about 14 or 15 points. Do you have 14 or 15 points? Do I have 14 or 15 points? Yes, I do. So I'm going to take a chance and bid three no trump. And let's see. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 24 points, which comes very close to the 25 point mark. So this might actually make. But since you are going for a game bonus, the risk is probably worth taking here. All right, I have 10 points, I pass. Partner bids one heart. And again, this shows five plus hearts and a hand in which we have not placed a point range yet. It starts at a minimum hand, but could be higher. We don't know. I have 10 points here, so I can bid up the line with one heart. I don't actually have to show my 10 points here. I show one spade to show I have four, at least four spades and at least six high cut points. Although, of course, I have more than that, but I'm going to build up the picture incrementally. Now, what does partner do now? Partner bids one no trump. And again, this one no trump on partner's part shows a minimum hand. You have 11 points. And once again, remarkably, you are in the invitational range for a responder. And if partner has a minimum hand, there is a possibility of your having a game if partner 
is on the stronger side of the minimum hand. So you beat two no trump. Partner passes. Is that the right decision? Partner has 12 high cut points versus your 10. That is the right decision to pass. You can play two no trump. Partner passes. What do you have? You have 13 high card points. You don't have a five card major, you don't have a four card diamond. So therefore you beat one club, which again, as I said, is one of the most common bits in bridge. Now, um, opponents have beat one diamond uh, over call which I'm going to ignore here because uh, this session is not about competitive uh, bidding. So partner bids three clubs. That means, and that implies, since we are always preferring major and no trump contracts, since we are always preferring major and no trump contracts, that means that he probably is short in at least one suit and doesn't have a major suit to suggest. And he bid three club. Right to indicate that he's probably around the 10 point range uh, with a club fit. This is a limit bit, right? So it's a 10 point range. So what do you have? You have only 13 points, 14 if you include the double turn with the distribution point, 14. So five clubs is um, hard to make from here because you need 29 points. There's a possibility you bid three no trump here. So should you bid three no trump? Maybe not. Because you are too are short in diamond. Then my guess is partner is also short in diamond. So let's pass. Indeed, both are short in diamonds. It's rather iffy. Three no trunk would is going to be rather iffy. Partner passes. What do you have? You have 17 high cut points and a balance hand. So one no trunk. Partner passes again. And again. There's nothing remarkable to speak of. Four high cut points only. Okay, I have 12 high cut points in a long major suit. So I bid one spade. Partner bids Two clubs. So by bidding two clubs, partner has bid a new suit, a forcing bid at the two level. That means partner has a invitational responder hand at least. I say at least because this is not a limit bid, it is a forcing bid. So we do not know the true uh, point range of partner yet, except that we know it is starts at invitational hand. All right. So what can I bid? What do I have in the first place? I have a minimum hand. So it will be rather, some beginners might want to bid two hearts. I suggest not because by our simple definition, 
two hearts is a forcing bit indicating you are stronger than you seem. Right? So it's much better right now because you have a minimum hand to think of limiting yourself. You can, there are only, there are actually three limit bits possible here. You can bid three clubs, two no trump, or two spade. All of them are limit bits. Two spade is a limit bit because you're repeating your own suit. Three clubs is a limit bit because you're repeating your partner's suit. And two no trump because no trump are limit bits. Three club doesn't seem likely because you only have two clubs here and your partner promises four. Not likely. Two no trump might be slightly dangerous because of your diamond suit, but it's not wrong to bid two no trump. The last one is two spade. Two spade does not necessarily promise six cards space in a situation like this. It just tells partner that you have a minimum hand and you don't want to bid to no trump, which applies you have a shortage in one suit. Okay, so when you bid two spade like this, you are telling partner, I can't bid two no trump or three no trump because I have one suit in which I don't have stoppers and I basically have a minimum hand, right? If I, ha I had a minimum hand. So what does partner do now? Partner bids three no trump. That actually tells you that partner has a strong invitational hand or a game likely hand. Let's take a look. Partner has 13 high card points, which for a responder is a game likely hand. That's why he went to game. When partner first saw me bid one spade, he already knew that game was likely because he had 13 plus, he had 13 high card points. So, there was no way he was going to let me stop short of, well, there's very little way, I would say, that he was going to let me stop short of game. So when I bid two spade, indicating a minimum, uh, minimum hand and uh, shortage in one suit, right? And he has basically good stoppers in, well, this was not so good, but this is covered. Okay. He doesn't have a good stopper in spades, but then I beat spades. So I kind of covered him. There's good stopper in hearts, good stoppers in clubs. This one is a sort of a good stopper in the sense that he has an ace, but it's a, a short suit. Nevertheless, he can probably take the risk and beat three, no trump. Another one. With four high card points, I'm going to pass. Partner bids one club. Again, another common bid, as I explained. Should I bid or should I not bid? For beginners, I suggest you just pass with less than six high card points. Let's ignore this one. Partner bids. Can I bid to support my partner? <laughs> okay, let's call let's call this let's let's just uh, drop this for the moment because um, I think it was my not my intention to show you competitive bidding. All right, so just ignore the opponents for a minute. The partner has eighteen high card points. So I was right to have passed because with less than six high card points, there is no way we can go for a game, even though partner is so strong or very little way, I would say. All right. 
Uh, so if opponents didn't interfere, partner will have beat one club, I pass, and everyone pass, and we'll have been playing in one club. Okay, I'm gonna do one last board. Partner passes. I have seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 high card points. So I can open. Obviously I can open major, and but diamonds are good. I have five of them, so I can open the diamonds. Partner bids one heart. The one heart covers my short suit rather nicely. And I have a minimum hand. So what do I do? Yes, of course, I bid one no trump to show. I don't have four card spade. I bid one no trump, so I couldn't bid spades. So I bid one no trump to show partner I have a minimum hand. Partner now bids two no trump. Again, inviting. I have 14 high cut points. I'm on the high side of a minimum hand. To top it off, I have a very nice diamond suit here. So therefore, I should be three no trap. There you go. This is probably the right thing for a three no trap contract. I think I'll do one more. Partner bits one heart. I immediately see I have a fit to partner. I have six points. So I bid two hearts. Sorry, six high cut point and one distribute point, that's seven points. It's a minimum hand. I bid two hearts. Partner passes. And here we go. There's a total of 21 high cut points plus two distribution points here, right? So we are in the 23 point range. Not quite enough for a game. So settling at two, two hearts is probably more than enough. 